Hey guys, Uncle Steph here. In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of the Rust programming language. Some of the details we'll go into are going to give you reasons why you might want to look into Rust, why people are interested in Rust, who's interested in Rust, and a few other things as well. Let's jump into it. All right, so here is an article on the AWS website. I'll put a link below this video, but you can see it here if you just take a look. The article is about the sustainability of Rust. It was written in February 2022, so a little less than a year ago. And I wanted to go over some of the bullet points here. So the main position of this article is they're looking at Rust as a energy efficient solution. And it is energy efficient because it runs super quickly and it runs very efficiently. So let me just jump into it. Rust is a programming language implemented as a set of open source projects. It combines the performance and resource efficiency of system, systems programming languages like C with the memory, memory safety of languages like Java, although it achieves memory safety through other methods. It doesn't use a garbage collector, but that's another story. Anyhow, it doesn't really matter. So it goes on to describe how Amazon is implementing Rust, why it implements Rust. In a nutshell, they found, Amazon finds that using Rust uh, is very energy efficient and highly performant. So they cite here, worldwide data centers consume about 200, tel 200 terawatt hours per year. That's roughly 1% of all the energy consumed on our planet. So they're saying, hey, we're using up a lot of energy. Well, they say they're using up a lot of energy. 1%, let me hide this. Now, is 1% really a huge amount of energy? I suppose it is, but, you know, my business experience always tells me, and also my software experiences, you know, use the 80-20 rule, 1%. Yeah. I think there's other areas where you can put your time and effort into to reduce energy consumption. That being said, if you're in the software world, anything you can do to save money and energy is good. It's good for everybody concerned. That said, people always look at only one layer deep or they look at the superficial factor in terms of determining energy costs. So for example, with electric cars, everybody looks at, oh, you don't put gas in the car, in the electric car. That's good. Except a lot of people don't consider where all the electrical energy comes from. A lot of it's from burning coal. And they also don't consider the uh, cost of producing an electric car, all those batteries and the rare earth minerals used to produce all those batteries. That's a pretty dirty process. Uh, so you have to look at the input cost as well as the running cost. Same thing with rust. Now it runs far, far um, more efficiently than most other languages. But there is a cost in terms of how many hours, development hours it takes to get somebody up, up and running as a Rust developer. And how long does it take to write something in Rust versus some other language? That's another story. So they say uh, 200 terawatt hours per year. That's roughly 1% of all energy consumed on our planet. There are a couple of really interesting things about the details of that energy use. If you look at the graph of energy consumption, the top line is basically flat going back to as far as 2010. That's incredibly counterintuitive given the tremendous growth of big data, machine learning, and edge services our industry has experienced over a period of time. The second interesting detail is that while the top line graph is flat, inside the graph, the distribution of traditional cloud and hyperscale data centers has changed dramatically over a certain period of time. Those cloud and hyperscale data centers have been implementing huge energy efficiency improvements, and the migration to that cloud infrastructure has been keeping the total use of data centers in balance despite the massive growth in storage in storage and compute for more than a decade. So here's that chart they're talking about here. Let's scroll down, look at things that you might find more interesting. As a developer, so they say here, AWS is on path to have 100% of our data centers powered by renewable energy by 2025, but even renewables have an environmental impact, as I just mentioned. It will take about half a million acres of solar panels to generate 200 terawatt hours of energy used by the data centers today. Now, 
you have to also consider that you also got to build all these uh, these solar panels, which lose efficiency over time, and you got to build all these batteries. So I don't know if they consider the cost or the production of all this stuff. This guy makes a good statement here. So while we were really proud of our success with renewable energies, as Peter DeSantis uh, at AWS says, he says, the greenest energy is energy we don't use. So let's go down to efficiency of programming languages here. So here's a study that was done a few years ago. You can see that C and Rust use the equivalent amount of energy. And you look at Java, it uses almost twice as much energy, or you can say Rust uses half as much energy as Java. Which is really interesting. You scroll down the other programming languages. So JavaScript is four times less efficient than uh, Rust in terms of energy usage. You look at PHP, it's 29 times less efficient than Rust. Python, Python is 75 times, 75 times less efficient, or it takes 70 times, 75 times more energy than Rust to run. Now, how much more time do you have to spend learning and writing Rust to get something out versus Python? I don't know. We'll have to see about that. It's interesting. If you look at PHP, PHP is 29 times more energy than C or Rust, and Python 75 times. You can actually see that. When you run PHP versus you run Python, you can see that PHP is just far, far more efficient, uh, almost three times more efficient. Runs much faster. I pump PHP a little bit because uh, everybody likes to attack PHP, so I say, hey, I'm going to pump it a little bit. Anyway, which is reflective to time. If you look at the second chart here, right here, time, you see that uh, PHP is 27 times, takes 27 times more time than Rust. Well, 27 points, what is it? 27.64 and Python is 71.90. I remember way back in the day when I was first looking at Python and I was thinking of maybe writing some web apps with Python. This is early days. And I decided against Python simply because Python was so inefficient compared to Java and PHP, uh, server-side JavaScript wasn't there yet, that to run anything with Python, I had to get a dedicated server. Whereas with PHP, I could use uh, shared hosting. Uh, this is for, before VPSs. And uh, so I didn't go with Python at the time. Anyway, things have changed. Uh, servers are far more powerful. So they summarize. It's not, it's not a surprise that C and Rust are more efficient than other languages. What is shocking is the magnitude of difference. Broad cons adoption of C and Rust could reduce energy consumption of compute by 50%, even with a conservative estimate. Yeah, but how much time and energy are going to be put into rewriting everything, you know? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but, you know, so we reduce our energy consumption by half of 1% around the world. It's something. So the question is, why not use more C? The language and developer tools are extremely mature, C, and the size of the developer community is much larger than Rust. If you scroll down here, I think, uh, hold on, hold on. There we go. Yeah, so Rust developer community in green here is 1.1 million. In C, where's C? That's objective C. JavaScript, Python, oh, CC plus 7.5 million, and even PHP. PHP is almost as big as C and C++ in terms of the community size. C Sharp is smaller than PHP. Uh, Kotlin, Swift, Go, Dart, Objective-C is smaller. JavaScript is the king, of course. Why? Because JavaScript has client and server-side programming impl uh, application. And uh, JavaScript has no competition on the client side. Anyway, let's go back up. So I got more data. I won't go through the whole thing because you could look at it yourself. But I wanted to uh, Discord, by the way. Here's another example I find interesting. So uh, Discord decided to rewrite some stuff they had done in Python Go. And they went to Discord. And they had some uh, pretty good, uh, well, here it is. The Rust version is more than 10 times faster overall with with the worst tail latencies reduced by 100 times. They're talking about, anyway, you can go read the article. So what you can see from all this data is that Rust is highly, high efficient, highly, highly efficient. And they get into some of the reasons why it's highly efficient here, which I won't get into. But I want to bring up something that is very relevant. 
how would you rate your expertise in Rust? So they did a study of over 8,000 developers in 2020, and they did a survey. Only 100 identified as expert, and of the respondents that said they were no longer using Rust, 55% of the people cited learning or productivity as their reason for abandoning the language. So let me get into some detail here. It takes experienced engineers three to six months of study supported by access to subject matter experts. So you got experienced engineers, people already know how to code. It takes them three to six months to get productive with Rust when they have access to Rust experts. To become productive with Rust, yeah. Some engineers has likened learning Rust to learning to eat your vegetables, while many of them love it. Once they are productive, a lot of engineers are declining against learning it or abandoning the effort because before they become productive. The potential impact of Rust on sustainability and security will only materialize if we turn the broccoli into a brownie. So basically, they're saying here in this article that they're going to have to make Rust more palatable, easier to learn for people. Now, they reference in the site, if you want to learn Rust, you can go to this right here to the free site, doc.russlang.org slash book. And there are also some YouTube channels, of course. One thing I want to end off this conversation about Rust on is um, Microsoft's Azure CTO. Here he, this guy Mark here, Rasinovich. Speaking of languages, it's time to halt starting any new projects in smooth. Here we go. Speaking of languages, it's time to halt starting any new projects in C, C++, and use Rust for those scenarios where non-GC language is required. For the sake of security and reliability, the industry should declare those languages deprecated. That's a pretty heavy-duty statement. This is from, again, the CTO of uh, Microsoft Azure. So there are definitely supporters for Rust. Something to consider looking at if you're an experienced Rust developer. Remember, this is still a niche language, but because of its extreme performance, energy-wise and runtime-wise, well, it's energy performance because it's runtime performance, there may be some great job opportunities for people getting into it, but this is not something you should jump into if you're a beginner to software development. This is something you should look at later on once you are comfortable writing code, you know, with easier languages like a JavaScript or a Python or a PHP or something. And then you can start looking at into that. Again, always with an eye on your local market. But if you become over time competent in Rust, you spend that time. This article would suggest there's probably a good probability you could find a job working at one of the big boys, whether it be uh, AWS or Microsoft, right? So something to consider, opportunity for people, but you got to look at this as a medium to long-term type of opportunity, unless you're already an experienced developer and you're willing to put in that six months or so of training to get you get yourself up to speed. And if you want to go work for one of the large organizations, I'm Uncle Steph. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to be mentored by me, take a look at the links below, unclesteph.com. I mentor people who are total beginners and experts in software development because I've been coding since 1994. All right. I hope you enjoyed the video.